come to join in this Ash Wednesday service, the official beginning of the season of Lent. Will you stand please and join with me in the responsive call to worship that is printed in your Behold, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of God's salvation. We tremble in fear and anticipation at the nearness of God so great and powerful. Return with all your heart, with weeping, fasting, and mourning. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Be reconciled to God through Christ Jesus and receive a new and right spirit within. We will fast and pray as a this preparing ourselves for faithful discipleship. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we come on this evening of humility and present ourselves before you, penitent and ready to seek your glory and your authority to seek your forgiveness and grace and mercy. We humble ourselves that we might have a vision of the glory that comes from the cross of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Help our hearts to be thankful for that blessed sacrifice, the gift that unites us all by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join now and sing hymn number 84, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. justice, we confess that our lives are linked to oppressive systems. God of peace. 
peace, we confess the violent movements of our hearts and the violent realities of our world.
us tonight from the prophet Isaiah. We'll share from Isaiah 58. The word of the Lord is before us. We'll share verses 1 through 12. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet, day after day, they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast I choose, to lose the bonds of injustice and undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call the Lord, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. Here ends this blessed reading, which comes to us this night from the prophet Isaiah. us to see the glory of God and the need 
for forgiveness for our sin, the need for repentance. In Jesus' name, help us to see wisdom by the light of the Spirit. Amen. I am the prophet Isaiah. You might be familiar with my work. As a young man, I was called by God to tell the people about God's message. I have traveled all around Israel and many other places in the world. I have gone where the people are. I tried my best to go to the people who needed to hear the message of God. The message that God has called me to share. And today, God has called me to this place. I am sharing a message with you today. And it is the same message that I shared with all of the people in Israel a long time ago. The people back then were relying only and completely on the practice of the Mosaic Law, the Mosaic Rites that had been passed down to them. They had the idea that if they followed those Mosaic rites to the exact letter of the law, if they followed that exact recipe for worship and faith, that that would be all that was necessary to find favor with God. They didn't consider what was in their hearts. They were embracing symbols and rituals that stood for humility that God requires. But I could see plainly <coughs> that the feeling of humility was not inside their hearts. The humble faith that they were confessing with their fasts and their sackcloths, was simply not borne out by the way that they lived their lives, especially apart from their faithful performance of those mosaic rituals during their time of worship. One day, a group came to me and said, why have we bothered with all of these sackcloth and fasting? It doesn't seem to make any difference at all. That is when I shared this message with them. I could see very clearly it wasn't that they didn't love God. It wasn't that they had intentionally forsaken God. It was that they had lost track of what God requires inside their hearts. What God requires inside the hearts of his children. These people had forgotten what it meant to truly experience humility inside their hearts. They forgot the true cost of heartfelt, humble faith. But most of all, they forgot the reward of living in the light of the Lord. They forgot what it meant to be loved by God and to share that love with those in the community around them. They forgot to add God's love into the performance of these rituals that they held in such high esteem. And for that matter, they forgot to add God's love into the way they lived their lives from day to day. You can lie on a sackcloth and ashes all you want. When that act is not accompanied by God's love, the grace and the kindness and the patience and all the things that go with the idea 
of true humility in the name of God, then you might just as well be lying on a beach somewhere with serpents fanning you with big palm branches. I have come to realize that this same trap touches every single generation of believers. And that is why I am here with you tonight. I understand that you are at the very beginning of the season that your community calls Lent. A season set aside to ask the question of faith. What can I give? How can I express my thankfulness for a sacrifice of the Lord? How can I live my life to show that I belong to God? Sometimes it's easy to see our faith clearly during the time set aside for worship and lose sight of its meaning in all the other aspects of our lives. So, as you enter this season of self-denial, I want to ask you, have you remembered what humility in faith and in life, humility inside your heart, really is that humility deep inside here. The humility that shows us the glory of God and the nothingness with us without Him. That humility deep inside here truly helps us to see the glory of God, His risen presence standing before you. In every corner of your life. And then, and then, you live your entire life as a celebration of the glory that you can see when you live your life in true humility. Humility is when you see God's glory and come to know beyond any doubt at all that compared to God's glory, Humility is the only choice that you have left. And the light of God's glory, that's the only source of hope in life. So humility is the message that I have come to share with you. Each generation and each community has room to grow for a more humble place in God's presence. Our own human nature constantly pulls us against the notion of complete humility in the presence of God. Every generation has its own version of a sackcloth and the ashes and the mosaic rituals. Every generation has, from time to time, used the rituals as a substitute for truly living all of life in utter amazement of the unspeakable glory of the God that we worship. So, if you are not really intentional and prayerful about your own humility, then as time goes on, you will find replacements for humility, just like the people that I addressed in my day. Rather than allowing life to be an uninhibited celebration of what humility was really intended to be. Because in our humility, 
we see the glory of God. Living humbly is simply giving all the glory to God. The people in my time were faithful. They just got their understanding of what God asked of them a little mixed up. This time that you call Lent is a time for you to shout out loud and do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Let the world know that all of the glory belongs to God. I will ask you the same question that I asked my brothers back then. Is this the kind of fast, the way we live our life, is this the kind of fast that God has chosen for his people? One that ends in doing just what you please? One where you end up taking advantage of others for personal gain? A fast that ends in quarreling and strife? If you are to be a child of God, a true child of God, you cannot live your life that way. You cannot fast that way and expect your voice to be heard on high. God asks of you, is this the kind of fast that I have chosen for you? Only one day set aside for a person to humble himself? Is it only a day for bowing one's head like a reed or for lying on a sackcloth? Is that what you call fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this kind of fasting that I have chose for you to lose the chains of injustice? To untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed free and to break every yoke, is it not to share food with the hungry and to provide for the poor wanderer, to provide shelter when you see a naked person, to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Life lived in that manner is the fast I have chosen for you. Then, in pure and sweet humility, your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then, your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. That is the fast I have chosen for you. So as you enter this time of self-sacrifice, this time of considering what humility is, this time of specially seeking out the glory of God, this is the fast I have chosen for you. You only need to say, yes, Lord, and come unto me. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come humbly before you this night and ask that this might be a beginning of a change in our fasting, a renewal of our sense of humility, and the glorious vision of your glory, which is always before us. May we truly be fed and empowered to move forward on this road that our Savior has given us to follow. We give you thanks for that opportunity. May your spirit 
be a light on our path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare for the imposition of the ashes, let us keep humility in our hearts. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. We ask that you grant that these ashes may be a sign of our mortality and penitence so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask now that you come forward one by one for the imposition of the ashes. of the ground, and to the dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. <coughs> you are dust, and to dust you shall return. That is the humility, the humility of your call. Believe and repent Trust in the glory of the gospel. You are the dust of the ground, and to that dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember, you are the dust of the ground, and to the dust you shall return. The humility is your call. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are the dust of the ground, and to the dust you shall return. That is your call to humility. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are the dust of the ground, and to the dust you shall return. That is your call to humility. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Your call to humility in the name of Jesus Christ. Repent believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are the dust of the ground, and to that dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are the dust of the ground, and to that dust you shall return. Humility is your call from God. and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are the dust of the ground. That humility is your call in the name of the Lord. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. ground, and to that dust you shall return your call in the name of the Lord. Okay. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are the 
dust of the ground, and to that dust you shall return. Your call to humility in Jesus Christ the Lord. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Your call to humility in the name of Jesus Christ. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are the dust of the ground, and to that dust you shall return. Your call to humility in the name of the Lord. and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join in the final hymn, number 78, Amazing Grace. <laughs>
This night, we enter our own spiritual wilderness and seek of what humility is, and seek of a picture of the glory of God and the light of the Spirit leading our way this day and forevermore. Amen.